every horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Benny Crocker Mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, folks, look around. Do you know someone who just yearns for a brand new bike? A real watch, maybe? Perhaps a doll? Or a new baseball glove? And how about you youngsters? What would you choose from over 30 delightful premiums like those? All at big, big savings. Well, listen. It's General Mills' Rainbow Premium Plan. You get wonderful premiums at savings up to 50%. Timex watches, for example. These retail for $7.65 at the store. But with 12 rainbow coupons, you get them for only $4.50. Say that's almost half price. Here's all you do. First, send for your free catalog of exciting rainbow premiums. Just mail your name and address on a postcard to General Mills, Box 3, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Second, start now to save rainbow premium coupons. You'll find them on the box tops of all General Mills cereals. They're on Wheaties, Cheerios, Trix, Kit, Sugar Jack, and the Betty Crocker pick a pack. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hooray! Judd Cooper owned one of the larger spreads in the Southwest Territory. Judd was a gruff type of man who ran his ranch with an iron hand. But there was one who took little or nothing from Judd, his ten-year-old daughter, Jane. To Judd, the sun rose and set in Jane's blue eyes and fair hair. And the ranch hand secretly enjoyed the way the little girl handled her father. Jane approached Judd at the corral one day where he and Tex the foreman we're looking over some highly prized horses that Judd had bought. Yeah. That dun-colored filly is as fine a piece of horse flesh as you could wish for, Tex. Eh? Nobody's to ride her but me, you understand? Sure, boss, I said it. Oh, sure is a beauty. It mm-hmm. costs plenty, too. Fact is, that filly costs more than any of the rest. Oh, Daddy, the new horses are here. You sure are, Jane. <laughs> Gotta take your eyes, Eddie. Oh, yes. Lord. Here's the one I want. See? That one over there. No, no, no. Hold on a minute. You've got more of an eye for good horse place than I thought. I was just giving orders that no one rides that silly but me. Yep, that's right. That's what you said. Oh. When do you let me ride that one, Cliff? I can ride pretty well. I think you can teach me. Jane, didn't I just say that... Uh-huh. You know, I'm going to name her Beauty. That'll be her name from now on. Now, listen here, girl. Get this through your head. I just gave orders that they... Oh, Daddy, you like that old horse better than you do me, I bet. No, of course I don't. You know better than that, Pat. Oh, golly, Pat. Did you hear that? But I let me have I it. didn't say that at all. I said now, that... Now, Daddy, don't be an Indian, Jerry. <laughs> no, isn't that something? What are you laughing at? Nothing. Only I saw... I'll do the thinking around here. Savvy? Yeah. I mean, you... That silly acts up and throws, Jane. You hear from me. Well, I'm going to hop. Well, come on. I'll start a beauty for you right now. Let's see if you can get along all right with her. For several days, Jane, under Texas watchful guidance, rode beauty around the ranch. Beauty sensed the love that Jane had for her and reacted to it with great affection. One night, Jane, waiting until the house was quiet, 
slipped on his shoes and putting on a flannel bathrobe, quietly left the house and headed for the large stable a short distance behind the ranch house. The moon was bright, and as Jane walked past the bunkhouse, he realized there was no need for caution, since the cowhands were staying in camp on the range while they put up new fencing. The stable was a long building with doors facing the rear of the ranch house and also doors on the end away from the other buildings. Jean quietly opened one of the doors just wide enough to slide through. Then she stopped and stood listening. As Jane peeked around the door, she was in time to see three figures leading the prize horses out of the rear door. Oh, Lord. They've taken the horses. I'm going in. Oh, they can't get scary. They can't. Wait. Oh, they Oh, they take a beauty, too. The pony. I'll ride after them. After several attempts, Jean managed to put the saddle on the pony, <laughs> the only animal left behind by the rustlers. She was panic-stricken at the thought of losing beauty, and somehow she felt as she went back after her father, he'd blame her for leaving the house. Silver and Scout Tunnel. I'll wait here with Jane. 
We'll take her back to her father's ranch and then try to pick up the trail of the Barnett gang. The Lone Ranger and Topper started back with the gang toward the Cooper spread. It was bright moonlight and they could see for some distance. As they rounded a bend in the trail, they saw a group of horsemen approaching. Oh, 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 Judd Cooper sent his men to trail the masked man and Indian while he took Jane back to the ranch house. It was dawn when the men rode up to the corral and dismounted. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, here comes the boy. Trying to take him. Judd's going to try to kill. Well, we might as well have been trying to trail a couple of ghosts, boys. They were too good at covering their trail. Got clean away from it. That's what I expected. You lunk-headed cowpokes couldn't trail a lame stray with red paint on her hoof. Well, we did the best we knew how, boys. Remember, even with a moon bright, it isn't easy to find. I'm not here to listen to excuses. Look, I noticed something about those two we met on the trail with Jane. Well, I noticed they got away, that's what. Yeah, sure, sure. But the other thing was that they didn't try to trade lead with us. Like as if they didn't want to risk hitting little Jane. Yeah, yeah. Jane tried to tell me they were her friends. They promised to bring her back home. She did. Gosh, what do you make of that, boy? I'll tell you what I make of it. Poor child's so confused and upset, she don't realize what she's saying. Gosh, I reckon that's so. Well, I'm not interested in what you reckon, Jake, or anyone else. You get on your bronc right now and head for town. Sure. What for? Tell the sheriff I want him to get every man he can to ride in the posse. Tell him all of us will ride with him when he gets here. We're going to scour the countryside where we catch up with that mass scowl who on the white horse and that outlaw Indian that's riding with him. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Boy, did you ever have one of those rough days at school? Maybe you didn't get a real high mark on a test or score as many points as you wanted in a game. Well, that's the kind of a day a guy likes to get home and find his mother's baked a great big chocolate devil's food cake. Mmm, a cake that says, I think you're swell no matter what. A perfect cake, the kind mom gets every time she uses Betty Crocker chocolate devil's food cake mix. And is it easy? All the good chocolatey fixings are right in the package. All she has to do is add water and two fresh eggs. For a cake that's so rich and homemade chocolatey good, you've got to have seconds, even thirds. Make sure there's lots of Betty Crocker chocolate devil's food cake mix in the cupboard at your house. For a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. to continue. Without bothering to listen to what Jane had to say, Judd Cooper was convinced that the Lone Ranger and Tahoe were the rustlers who had run off his five horses. He sent one of his men to town for the sheriff and a large posse, saying he was determined to scour the countryside until the two had been caught. What's up, no fella? He's in color. Don't be wrong, Toto. Ah. Me and your storekeeper tell woman, sheriff getting big posse together. Them not hunt for that gang. Them hunter. Well, Cooper will probably take most of his men along. He can try to pick up Barnett's trail behind the Cooper stable after the men have left. Here's Hoover. Let's follow easy. Easy, 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 
The Lone Ranger and Toto concealed themselves and their horses in the arroyo. Finally, the sheriff, with Judge Cooper and about 30 men, passed by on the trail. After they'd gone a safe distance, the masked man and Indian left the arroyo and rode in a wide circle, finally coming to a halt behind Judge Cooper's stable. Buck stood right behind him. 
Suddenly, the masked man kicked back. And then whirled, swinging his hand down against Buck's gun arm. This will do it. And this will finish it off. A heavy blow to the chin took Buck off his feet and stretched him on the ground. The Lone Ranger heard the other two slam out the front door. With both guns ready, he knew they'd be smart enough to separate and come around either side of the shack. Hal Barnett came into view around the corner of the shack with drawn guns. Even as he fired at Hal, he expected a slug to rip his back from the other man's gun. No, you won't. Hold oh, no, you got that other one just in time. I can almost feel a bullet coming from behind me. Oh, we've got three. That must be all. Yes. Oh, look, coming into the pass, the posse. Ah, we get behind Jack. Maybe them shooters us. I guess they saw the bullet I gave James. Hey, they got all three of them. Yeah, they need our help, Sheriff. Yeah, I guess they did. You and the men can take these rustlers. That's Hal Barnett and his men. Hal oh, Barnett? Oh, man alive, that's some cat. Little James told us to give a bullet together. Then Jed and I remembered who you were. I'm glad you did. I was getting tired of hiding from your posse. Glad you can take Jane's horse beauty back to her. I know she'll be happy. She sure will. Yes, sir. I don't know leave now. We left our horses on the rim. We'll climb up the way we came down. Adios. Adios. By thunder, that's one fine hombre, Sheriff. They don't come any fine. Yes, yes, right. Now, now, wait a minute, boss. This morning you wanted to see him living with bullets. That's right. Now you Now, say. listen here, Tex. Don't be trying to tell me what I can say. Or how I can feel, Savvy. Sure, sure, boss. Great day. Look at that masked man go up that rope over yonder. Yeah. And now there goes the Indian. Yes, sir. I knew all the time little Jane knew what she was talking about. That's one friend she can be glad of having. But, boss, she said this morning that what Jane... What I said and what I meant are two different things, Savvy. Double you lazy bunch of waddies is she can't tell an outlaw from... Well, from the best hombre in the West. The Lone Ranger. Oh, oh, oh. Special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.